Hey everyone and welcome to The Sandbox. The first half of 2021 is already over and so I thought it would be a fun idea to rank all of the books I've read so far this year. This is a part one and so I will add to this in a part two sometime in late December or early January of next year. I tried out monthly wrap-ups in the first quarter of the year, but since no one was watching those, I decided that I would do videos like this instead. They're more fun because they're rankings and tier lists, and I'm just not able to get through as many books as full-time booktubers are in a month, so these videos just make more sense at the end of the day. So from January to June, I was able to get through eight novels, not counting graphic novels or children's books like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which I still do indulge myself with every now and then. So for the ranking today, in the order that I read them, I have The Hobbit, Dresden Files book number two, Full Moon, Something from the Night Side, The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers, Breach of Peace, Mistborn Book 1, The Final Empire, and the second book from A Song of Ice and Fire, A Clash of Kings. So in total, five debut novels and three sequels within various series. And I had a lot of fun with them for the most part. I thought it was a good, healthy mix of fantasy series with some lesser known series and some very popular ones as well. They are all trying to accomplish different things. So where I have them here on this list may not be where I have them on a ranking video for that particular series. So with that said, let's dive on in. Starting with number eight in the C tier, I have Something from the Night Side. I enjoyed this book for what it was. It's a popcorn mystery thriller with a private investigator who is very similar to Harry Dresden from the Dresden Files series. John Taylor, our protagonist, has a knack for finding things that are lost to everyone else, and I think this book delivered a fun, noir adventure into the magical and dangerous land known as the Nightside. As the first book of the series, it did suffer from having to set up some of the recurring characters, but compared to Stormfront, the first book for the Dresden Files, I think the emotional arcs hit better here, but the character's consistency was a lot floppier with some of the quirks from the beginning kind of fizzling out once you reach the end of the book. The chapters are bite-sized nuggets of mystery. The pacing I found is quite phenomenal, but compared to other mysteries and the rest of the books on this list, it was the most average of them all. Moving on to the B tier, I have Daniel B. Green's debut novella, Breach of Peace. This one was a lot darker of a mystery, hitting those grim dark notes of gore and terror, but its character work and dialogue made me fly through this thing. It is rather short, so I was able to listen to the audible version and then read the whole thing cover to cover all within a week. And overall, I enjoyed the story and the look into the heads of its characters, but I am excited to see if Daniel can up his game a bit and bring something a little bit more special with his follow-up novel. The next two in the B tier are neck and neck. I made a pledge at the beginning of the year that I was going to read The Hobbit before diving into The Lord of the Rings, which I also pledged to read by the end of this year. And two of these books were difficult for me to get through, but for different reasons. So of these two, I have The Hobbit very, very, very slightly above The Two Towers. The Hobbit is very much a children's book, so the characters don't really stand out in this book as they do in the main series, but the adventure is fun, especially if you don't know what to expect. I think the plot itself and the world building are the best components to this book, and for a children's book, that's really all you need. The story does drag on in certain places, and the book could shave a few pages, but at the end of the day, I think readers would prefer the length that it's at and to not feel like they're missing key scenes or even just time to breathe between action sequences. Now, the two towers I was really looking forward to after finishing The Fellowship of the Ring. The Fellowship is a solid classic, but it does have a slower start than most modern fantasies do nowadays. And I knew the story of the two towers going into it, so I was really looking forward to those big action scenes. But now that I've had time to sit on it, I think Tolkien's decision to split up the story into the two parts that he had really hindered the experience for me personally. On one hand, the battles of Helm's Deep and the Two Towers are super epic, even though they are kind of short at certain points. But then you have Frodo and Sam's leg of the journey in this middle 
part of the trilogy and it just really drags on in certain places. There were definitely parts that could have been shaved off that the average reader like me would not have missed and I think even a couple that hardcore fans could do without as well. The pacing felt very slow at times with that part and I felt like I was forcing myself to read certain chapters rather than looking forward to them. So after I did finish The Two Towers, I felt that I needed a break before moving on with the series. I still think it deserves the title of a fantasy classic, but reading it for the first time in this day and age does feel quite antiquated at certain moments. Which leads me to the next one on this list, kicking off the A tier, I have The Fellowship of the Ring. And while I do think this one suffers from slower pacing as well, I'd say it's largely in the beginning, as it slowly builds and builds and builds into its much bigger climax. Now, I love the world building in the first few chapters with the Shire and the history of the rings. The order of events also made a lot more sense to me now reading this than it did when I was a dumb, inattentive kid watching the films. But I will say that there were a portion of chapters that were painstakingly long. I'm not going to say that they were boring, but Tolkien certainly felt the need to describe every tree and meadow and freaking cloud in the sky. He even takes time to put in poems and song breaks. But once you get to the Prancing Pony and you meet Strider, the story shifts into high gear and the high epic fantasy really begins. There are huge stakes and consequences, fantastic world building filled with elaborate history and different races, and the action definitely has you on the edge of your seat. I really enjoy this first book in the trilogy, and while I did need a break after finishing The Two Towers, I am certainly looking forward to finishing it this year with The Return of the King. Next up on the list, I have Fool Moon, the last mystery book I've read so far this year. A few months after the events of Stormfront, Harry Dresden is back at it trying to solve the mystery behind apparent werewolf killings, but the question is, is it an actual werewolf or just a group of rebels who are werewolf fanatics? I thoroughly enjoy this book. It was a huge step up from the first one, including pacing and even writing style a bit. Dresden's character also feels a bit snappier here and more consistent throughout when compared to the first book. I love the werewolf lore and the action, as well as the expansion on how his magic works. So far in the series, my favorite little writing tool that Jim Butcher employs is his use of potions. Dresden makes a couple potions within each of the first two books, a tradition I hope continues. Uh, with the rest of the series, and they just make for some incredible scenes, both intense and hilarious. The world building here is great as well, keeping the mysterious entities that are the Never Never and the White Council, and all in all, I simply can't wait to move forward and read the next one, which is hopefully before the end of 2021. There are minor flaws within this book, but to be fair, you'd have to be pretty critical or actively looking for them to find any. But topping off the A tier is A Clash of Kings, the second book within A Song of Ice and Fire. And this one felt more episodic than the first one, using bundles of chapters to lead up to the next big development in the story. Sure, there are some lulls here more than in the first one, but I never thought that a chapter was too long for what it was trying to accomplish. Overall, I thought the pacing was very good, building off of what the first one achieved while adding new exciting elements. Stannis and Renly finally get some time to shine on the page, although less so than they do in the show. There's more magical elements here now that dragons are back in the world, um, so that becomes a bigger plot device with the Red Woman, Wildfire, and the House of the Undying. This book just feels like the whole world is waking up and getting involved at what's at stake. And while there are times where it's hard to follow each and every little moving piece, Martin does a stupendous job at framing and highlighting the key players at any given moment. But at the top, the sole entry in the S tier, I have Mistborn, The Final Empire. This is the first book for Brandon Sanderson's other big series besides the Stormlight Archive, and I'm very late to the party. This is the first entry of the first trilogy, also known as Era 1, and he's currently finishing up the fourth book of Era 2 as we speak. But even though this is an older book of his, it still felt fresh and original, toying with the tropes that Tolkien introduced in The Lord of the Rings. The premise for this is basically, what if there were a Chosen One and a Dark Lord, but at the end of the day, the Dark Lord won? This book takes place after those events and follows a super-powered heist team 
that tries to take it all back. It's got a fun and complex magic system, it's got intense battles and drama, it's got politics, it's got history, and most important of all, it has an interesting heist. It's honestly been a while since I had this much fun reading a book, and I can't wait to continue on with this series. Well, that's my list of what I've read so far in 2021. Let me know what you guys have been reading and if you have any suggestions for me. Currently, I am in the middle of the uh, Percy Jackson series as well as the Witcher series. And I'm also revving up to start the Eye of the World in preparation for Amazon's Wheel of Time series, which we just got word is going to premiere this November. Anyways, that's enough for me. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I will see you all next time.